race. Oh no, we saw him do race. this in the late it's night poker us. race final. You're right. We raise all in. I call Jack. Luke Patton made a big hand only to see a bigger one flop up and now the flush on the river. No good against Jack's full. Patton's not out, Simon, but he has just dumped a wad of chips in the Swedes' direction. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but um, we have to understand, Jesse, these guys are amateurs. They've come through so much, and uh, Luke Patton's just shown us that it is possible to make the same mistake twice. I think it's a very good hit, this all top European players, except Tony Gere, that is a top Australian player, but it's very tough, so... I can't beat them with just skill, I need some luck as well. Looking at the poker ladder, all five card hands fall into this poker ladder with a royal flush on top and a high card on the bottom. That's how you decide who wins. Barney Boatman's had a rocky road so far. Pass. Pass. 100 to call and here comes Roy the boy. Race to 275. Pass. Mm -hmm. Almost triple the bet. Queen 10 off suit, a little bit ambitious. When, you call. when you've got call. five players behind you, Raul Mestra is going to call with a pair of sixes. Pass. No Pass. surprise that we're seeing lots of flops, Simon, Pass. is that these guys have stacks that are big enough to play with. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a completely different style of play to uh, late night poker race with the amateurs. You're going to see a lot more flops. Oh, wow, and there's a flop. Well, let me tell you, there is going to be some serious action taking place here. <laughs> Your heart You're goes out to Roy the boy, Brindley, but Mestra's about to do him up like a kipper. Three sixes against two pair, and Roy has checked it. This is check with the intention to raise. Yeah, well, the, the, the way to play this hand by Roy Mestra is not to check it, because the odds are that Roy Brindley is sitting there with something like ace queen or king queen. Great play by Raul Mestra. Race to 1100. I'd like to see Raul Mestra just flat call this now. I mean, if it's me, I could be crazy. Can't possibly put Roy Brindley on top two. He's not going to get paid if he re-raises, and Roy Brindley's only got ace, queen, or king, queen. Mestre made it 400. Brindley made it 1,100. 700 on Mestre to call. I call. Call. Oh, perfect play by Raul Mestre. And this guy's an amateur. I'll tell you what, he has impressed me so much. I have not seen him do anything wrong. Do you know he's only been playing for a year? Well, Simon, there's a lot of draws out there. I was going to say, that jack yeah. makes a possible oh, straight. Oh, oh wow. Brin Roy Brindley has just committed suicide. <laughs> I cannot believe that Raul Mestre is not going to call this. And there's a couple hands Mestre can't beat. He can't beat ace-king. He can't beat three queens. He can't beat three tens. He can beat everything else, can't he? Simon? Yeah, but at the end of the day, Jesse, why would Roy Brindley re-raise him on that five flop with ace-king? Is he, is he re-raising hoping he can get him off the hand or he can hit a middle pin jack? And if you hit the middle pin jack, you check. The only thing that can be beating him is maybe three jacks, and he's hit the jack on the turn. Well, we know that in late night poker race, he would have thought for a while, and he would have made the correct call. Call. call? Yes, he's going to call. He's going to call. Call. He did call. Roy Brindley, surprised to see you three sixes, saying, you got me, son, but there are outs. If Brindley catches a queen or a ten on the river, Simon, he'll make a higher full house. Mestre needs any other card in the deck. And this pot over 10,000. Wow. Brindley's out, quads! The board paired the wrong way. I mean, this is a man in form. Roy the boy, once that flop came, there was no out. Well, Roy, you said you've been out of form lately. Is this an example, or did you make a mistake? Um, it's very difficult to get off the top two pair. Um, I just ran into a better hand. I don't think many players in this format could have could have got off the hand. All in all, not a good day at the office, although I haven't got too many regrets. Well, seven players left, and Raul Mestros really shook things up. The pros are sitting there, and they're seeing why this man has just won $50,000 and is the late-night poker race champion, and they're certainly going to be giving him a lot more respect. Well, I can make a bigger flush and get, and get stuffed, that's right. I'll raise it. I'll raise, says Tony G, and why not? Ace four of diamonds on the button. Luke Patton in the small blind. Well, no, he's not going to play this hand. Probably nine of clubs. That's a hand if he had more chips he definitely would have called with. Call. 
With the hand that uh, Rail Master has got, he's actually better raising before the flop and defending his big blind because you can get into trouble. But uh, he's chose to flat call to try and stop uh, Tony G stealing his blind all night. Check. Tony G's hit this flop. He's got bottom pair and he's going to bet out. Mestra had the better ace before the flop. Now Tony has put Raoul in a very thin situation. It's so hard to predict what Raoul's going to do. We've seen him raise on nothing time and time again and get away with it. It might work here. 1,000. <laughs> Raised to 1,000. This guy is great. He don't know poker laurels. Tony G, take it and shove it. 600 more for Tony. Tony G hates to be outplayed. Take it. Pass. Yep. Well, it's ironic there, isn't it? The fact that uh, Raul Mestre chose not to re-raise with his A7 has allowed him to make this bluff because it's uh, putting doubt in Tony G's mind. He's thinking, well, he could easily have a jack. What a fantastic statement for this Spaniard to make. He don't care. He don't know no Tony G. It's raining Mestra. I never played a live game against uh, a field full of professional players, and I think it's going to be really different from the, the last tournament against amateurs because uh, these people know a lot about poker. They have more experience than I do, and uh, Alec and Hope is to get lucky to, to be into the final. For a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two to Las Vegas to include flights, accommodation and spending money courtesy of PartyPoker.com, answer the following question. Where is the World Series of Poker held? A. London B. Monte Carlo or C. Las Vegas? Channel4.com slash poker to enter. What's going on here? We're all giving thanks. That's what's so the bull is loose in this china shop. <laughs> Seven players remaining in this heat. The beauty of it is that you've got bluffed as well. That's what's so good. Race to 300. It. Well, Ken Leonard obviously didn't <coughs> learn <coughs> much from uh, <laughs> much the way that uh, the Queen's head off suit was played by Roy Nine. Brindley. He's decided to have a shot <laughs> at it. Raised it up. It's a bit complicated the situation. Oh, and look at this, Luke Call. Patton. Oh, and he's called. What fantastic play by Luke. He's short stack on the table, and he wants to double up with his hand, and he wants to do it against Ken know. Leonard. Yeah, revenge a dish best served cold, although... Patton, Sorry, by not re-raising, has allowed Pascal Perot to <coughs> creep in and perhaps spoil the party. Here's the flop. Oh dear, not a good flop there for Luke Patton. One of them's bound to have a nice. I mean, Simon, this is pretty much just a factor of uh, of Luke not isolating, isn't it? Well, yes, but you can't blame him, Jesse. I mean, he's short stack on the table, and uh, there's two ways of playing his hand there. He can either flat call and hope oh. that the blinds pass. Pass. Um, or, of course, he could have re-raised it and, and, and maybe won no more, oh, apart from the bets that are out there. The only reason you call. Poor Check. Luke Patton. Yeah, oh, dear. Is oh. in yeah. terrible shape. Okay. Call. Luke, so Luke is going to go out of the tournament here. Luke's all in hand. Yeah, he's actually yeah, drawing he dead. A king wouldn't That's help it. because yeah, right. Pascal already has aces is full. Is and deuce. Simon, nothing has gone right for Luke Patton today. You're absolutely right, Jesse, but to be quite honest with you, once Pascal Perot called him on that flop of ace-six-ace, he should have been done with the hand. So we lose Luke Patton. He was seventh in the late-night poker race final, and tonight he finishes seventh again in late-night poker masters. Oh, Luke, you made an early exit from that late-night poker race final. It's happened again. Yeah, it's true. I, didn't, I don't think I really learned as much as I should have done from going out early in the previous final. Should have gone all in on the Kings, but um, held back, fought with the Aces. Disaster. But I carried on, you know, carried on betting, which is a mistake. So lots to learn. Cards coming out now. It will be Mestra under the gun. And six players left. We've already lost two <laughs> British players. We've still got two British players, one French, one Australian. Spanish Raul Mestre, late night poker race champion, Seven. but don't leave out Ken Leonard, the great Seven player from Sweden. <clears throat> there he is. Wow, this was a bit unorthodox for Did Mestre, raise raising under gun with King Six suited, and Perot is on him like a raise shot. Raise all in. Raise his queen and re re raise from Ken Leonard. <laughs> Mestre's thinking, how Pass. about that? 